We're on a journey today. We're not going to travel on a canal, but we're going to go learn about the Ohio and Erie Canal. So we're going to visit uh, part of the Ohio and Erie Canal here in Groveport, known as Lock 22. A canal lock was a stone structure intended to uh, enable canal boats to make a change in elevation. Ohio, uh, contrary to what a lot of people think, is a hilly state. It's not a flat state. Uh, and the canal had to overcome something like 150 different points between uh, Cleveland and Portsmouth where it had to go up or down a hill. And the only way to do it is to have an enclosed chamber with doors on it where you could fill it with water and then put a boat in it, close the doors, uh, drain the water out to lower the boat to another level or reverse the process to take it to a higher level. So we're going to visit block number 22 on the portion of the Ohio and Erie Canal that's known as the Southern Descent. Uh, it started uh, in Newark at a higher level and descended through a series of locks all the way down to the Ohio River at Portsmouth. And the city of Groveport has taken on the preservation of Lock 22 uh, as an important part of its historic character and its historic story that the, the community tells because it had so much to do with the founding of the Groveport itself. Hi, Rick. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. How you doing? Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. How are you? Hi, Rick. Good to see you here, here at Lock 22. Lock in 22 Groveport. in Groveport. Look at all that stonework. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so we're at the upper end of the lock, where it would have been the upstream end. This is the east end. Mm -hmm. And now um, Chester is that way. OK. And then this is where you'd lower the boats if they're headed down toward Portsmouth. Correct. OK. Well, let's take a walk through the lock, since we can, and, uh, and talk about it a little more. Okay. Now, these were built on wood foundations, is that right? Correct. Uh, the wood floor is still in this lock. Um, I dug around one day and rediscovered it, and it's still there. The wood floor, as long as you keep it wet, will stay preserved and still hold its function. Which is why the city used the gravel here, so when it rains, it goes through down and keeps the right. floor wet, but doesn't let it evaporate. It works like a cereal bowl. Yeah, yeah. Like when you pour the milk on cereal, the water goes through and gets down below and keeps everything wet. And then the boards go up underneath the okay. walls and well, I'm sure everything Well, people look at these big stones and can't imagine that it's built on a wood foundation, but that was the technology at the time. Correct. And, you know, it's been, what, almost 200 years yes. that this wood has been in place. And it's so still doing its job. Doing its job because the walls are straight. Right. If the wood fails. And then you, you can see some of the mason's marks here on the, on the walls yes. where they finish the surfaces. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes they have little margins at the edge. It really is, in ways, it's a work of art. Yeah. It really is. So we're, we're here down by the floor, so the boat's getting lowered in the lock. The bottom of the boat might be somewhere like here, a little bit above the floor. Correct. So it probably was a six or eight foot drop or a rise if you're going the other direction. At least. And then the wood, you, you don't see them anymore because wood exposed the way the gates were, will rot away. But those pockets is where you would see the yeah, gates. Yeah, you can is still see right? the notches where the, the gates were on both mm -hmm. ends. And they were essentially watertight. Right. But had With wickets at the bottom. And okay, the water so, ran and out. so you'd open those and the water would go in or out, either right. flow down from above, um, or you'd leave it, leave it lowered, bring the boat in, open it up at the other end, let the boat float up. Correct. And that's how the lock worked. That's exactly how it worked. Well, Kathy, you've been involved a long time now, and I know in uh, Underground Railroad history. That's, you're you're yes. sort of the queen of Underground Railroad <laughs> history here in Ohio. Uh, but tell me about what happened with canals. What, what got you into canals? Well, what got me interested in canals was simply a friend of mine and I, we took a bus tour from Fairfield County to Salada County, and we were looking at canal features. And the first time I saw a lock was the one in Fairfield County. Mm -hmm. And really, I had no idea what it was, a, what it was for or <laughs> how it was used. It was just a bunch of rocks, you know, to me, but they were just quite fascinating. But the more we looked at locks and the more I started reading the markers, like there's a marker, you know, mm -hmm. for lock 22, I started to realize what an expansive operation this had to be. I mean, just the sheer engineering feat of building the canal, I was just awestruck by the history of it. But as I started to see each of these locks, I felt that they needed to be preserved. You know, some of them are in very good condition, such as Groveport's lock is wonderful. It is. There are the others best. that, you know, need a lot of work. You know, there may be trees growing through a side or, 
uh, lock stones missing. So that led to your calling these communities together, Groveport and some of the other communities on what we're calling the what was called the Southern Descent. We're calling it that too. Yes. It's now a historic district. Yes. Listed in the National Register of Historic Places. I think there are what 14 canal features that are now listed and recognized as being important. Yes. In the history of the state, history of transportation and economic development of Ohio. And, of and you really got that going. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> Just to see these massive structures now be preserved and have markers to tell to tell the story, so people can understand just what it took to build a canal, how the Ohio's canals were so important to the economy right. at that time. Right. I just felt it was important to save these structures um, because th that's all that's left. Well, Kathy, I know Groveport has made a big commitment here preserving Lock 22, but it's not the only community. I think the next major one down the road is Lockbourne in Southern oh, yeah, Franklin yeah. County. Oh, yeah, and yeah, I'd like to take you down there and see that. Um, they have uh, four locks, a guard lock, and part of the Columbus feeder. And, well, they, uh, boy, that's quite a complex. That's well, quite a complex. We better go get a look. Yeah, we, let's go get a look. All right. Hi, Dave. Hi, Mayor. Hi, how are you? you? How are you? Hi, how you doing? Good nice seeing you. See you. Hi. So here we are in Lockbourne, uh, famous, famous for the locks, and Lock 30 being one of the better preserved ones. Right. It, uh, it's part of the whole system that uh, came from the Licking Summit, uh, which we now call the Buckeye Lake, right. and uh, fed water here all the way to southern descent at Ohio River. Well, we were in Groveport, and um, the Lock 22 is there. This is Lock 30, so there were eight locks between Groveport yes, and here. So there, there was, were. There was quite a change in elevation, but I was wondering, the canal never went to Columbus. It was the capital, uh, but no, never, the, never went to the capital city. What's right. the reason? The, uh, it, when the canal was laid out in 1822-23, uh, it bypassed Columbus, but uh, in fact uh, it had a feeder. Columbus feeder that was 11 and three quarters mile long from just a few hundred yards down here all the way up along the Scioto River, edge of the Scioto River into the uh, central part of Columbus. So it joined here at, at Lockport. Yes, so this it was did. a major junction at one point. Yes, it was. It was a major junction. And we're in a public park here. It's it's owned by the, the, the village of Lockbourne. Yes, it is. Uh, and I understand there's another lock. Number 29 is kind of in the distance. It's on the other side of the park um, by Lockbourne Road. And there's a trail that connects them. Is that correct? Yes. We have um, collaborated with Metro Parks, Columbus Parks, and Pickaway County Parks. Oh, great. And so what we're doing is we're putting a walking trail along the now path. Um, so you'll be able to go around lock 29 mm -hmm. up to lock 30 and then across the canal towpath all the way into Pickaway County. And then from that point, Pickaway County wants to take it to lock 31, which is in Millport, and right. then continue down the canal into Portsmouth eventually. Well, that goes to what Kathy has been working on, all of these communities coming together to sort of take advantage of these historic features. Now that they're all officially listed as historic, right. um, taking advantage of them for recreation, for getting the history of the canal better known. So Lockbourne is definitely part of that. And it was very easy because all of the entities were so um, excited about the history of their law. Yeah. And so it was almost like everybody was waiting, you know. It just, to, they just needed to get to meet it, each it, other. It, right, they just needed <laughs> to meet each other to see what they all had in common. Well, let's take a look at the lock. Um, the details are always interesting. Um, this is sandstone, um, as most of the locks were, is that right? That is true. All these uh, on the Ohio and uh, Erie Canal are sandstone. And on the Miami and Erie, they use limestone, but all this through here is sandstone. Right now, it looks like it's pretty stable. It's fairly decent, uh, and there are some areas on each end where there were wooden gates. Right. which made the lock work. And those were pretty standard dimensions, weren't they? Wasn't it around 100 feet or so? That uh, it the was lock not, uh, the interior part, the ch what was called the chamber of the lock, was 90 foot long and 15 foot wide. Okay, and that just that just fit a boat, right? You wanted, that, to, you wanted to put as little water as possible into the lock. Right. So you don't waste it. Right, so it still it, took about 60,000 gallons to do a complete lock through. Really? Either going up or down. Up or down, okay. yes. Okay, 60,000, that's a lot of water. Yes, it was. Because water supply was a constant issue. Wasn't right, it? Uh, particularly here, uh, because uh, periodically you had to add water as we did just down the way from the uh, Big Walnut Creek. Mm -hmm. uh, water would enter, and that's why it was called a feeder. Right. It fed water into 
the Ohio. And well, that was the Ohio. official name of the Columbus branch, wasn't it? The Columbus Theater. Columbus all, Theater. All the boats exactly could use right. it as well. And then the big stones on top, the animals that would haul the boats wouldn't walk on the stones. They'd be on a separate gravel path right. for, they to protect their feet. Right. They were on a, a ten foot wide, what was called a tow path. Okay. They were usually for most boats, if you were loaded, uh, about three in tandem. Was that horses, mules, both? Both. And there was only a certain speed they could go, what, four miles right. an hour? Is four right? miles an hour was the maximum, and that was so that the banks, which were man-made, would not be washed away. So mm -hmm. uh, most boats went somewhere between two and three miles per hour. Probably a fast the walking, walk. Probably the walking speed of a horse or mule exactly. anyway. So. Exactly right. So a 308 mile trip from Cleveland to Portsmouth was several days. Several days usually, yep. Uh, yep. But it must have been a pleasant way to travel. Well, it was, it was very quiet, uh, no noise, unlike railroads and cars and yeah. things we have today. It was very quiet and very peaceful. Well, yeah, and you mentioned the railroads. Of course, they're the reason the canals began to get eclipsed almost as soon as they were finished. Well, right, but early on, uh, most of the uh, railroads in the state of Ohio went east to west because right. most of the goods were in the eastern part and the canals went north to south. So there was a period of time where they worked together too. Mm -hmm. So that's why even though most of the railroads started out in the 1850s, the canals continued to go till the 1900s. And it, it really meant economic development for exactly. parts of the state, especially the southern part of the state. M many towns owe their very existence, Groveport being one of them, to the canal system. Yeah, because the canal went through there, yeah. that's right. You know, Jeff, you mentioned uh, economic tourism, and that was one of the features I was thinking about when we were working on the National Register nomination. Sure, you know, right, to get recognition, to bring awareness. Absolutely, you and, have a, a economic, a tourism, cultural tourism, um, heritage tourism, you know, it's just great heritage about the canal, you know. And people are interested in this. They, they want to have those authentic experiences and, and see truly historic places. Um, so, yeah, places like Lockbourne are right on the cutting edge of right. giving people what they want from a recreational kind of educational standpoint, cultural standpoint. It's a good thing you're, you're, you're building that uh, Magnolia Trail, because yes. that's going to bring people in town. We already have some folks that come through just to look at the locks, but we think this will bring more people in. Yeah, that's great. And um, it'll be an educational trail as well, so if they want to learn about the history, they can. So I've learned so much about the southern descent of the Ohio and Erie Canal. There's a northern descent up toward Cleveland. I'll be going there up to Roscoe Village near Coshocton, and I think maybe a canal boat ride. So I think I'll be learning even more about the Ohio and Erie Canal. But thank you so much for what you've given us today. Uh, what we've learned about the canal, and uh, good luck with the future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for coming. Enjoy it.